First of all, I'll introduce ourselves. Um, uh, Vanessa Beck and I am Andy Danford. We're both members of the um, current uh, editorial team of uh, the BSA Journal Work Employment Society. Uh, we're all, the whole team is based at the University of Leicester. Uh, there's eight of us, so it's quite a large team, and that reflects the large amount of uh, papers that are submitted to the journal each year and the corresponding um, large volume of work. Um, I'm one of two um, editors-in-chief of the journal. The other one is my colleague, uh, Melanie Sims. And Vanessa is one of two reviews uh, editors. Um, but, you know, so we, we have uh, separate functions in that respect, but Vanessa and I and all of the other team are all heavily involved in um, editing and processing all types of articles, whether they be the general articles or, or um, uh, the um, more um, specific ones, such as debates and controversies, um, managing the whole uh, editing process from um, beginning to end. We can... Um, First, go on to the review process itself. Um, starting at the first um, box on the left, um, Work Employment Society has um, it, it publishes a range of different categories of article, uh, but the main um, research article that you'll see there, and you'll see the same pattern in sociology and other journals, um, are the most common form, and and we get something like 320 new article submissions each year. And that's, I'm only focusing on the mainstream research articles. Um, so 320, and at the first stage, uh, it's up to the editors, uh, essentially, to make one of two decisions. Either to accept them, not for publication, of course, but to accept them uh, as of suitable quality to go to, um, um, through the refereeing process. Um, that we then uh, send them to our referees at stage two. Or the um, other option is to reject what we call a desk reject, to reject the paper outright. Uh, so we then move to stage two. Um, I'll be talking about in a moment how we select such referees, but in the case of WES and um, I believe sociology as well, we would always choose um, three reviewers uh, from one of our boards. I'll talk about our boards in a moment. Uh, uh, those referees will get um, one month to review the paper. Um, you know, sometimes there's obviously some leeway applied there. A lot of referees um, submit their reviews faster than a month, some very fast indeed, but others, for various kind of workload reasons, take longer. But generally, the, uh, you know, we ask them to, be, um, to submit their reports uh, within the month. Uh, when the three reports come in, we move into stage three, uh, the editors then have to make um, a decision um, based on um, a distillation of the main points raised by the three reviewers. Uh, very many are, um, as a result of the editor's assessment of the referee reports, uh, have to go back for um, major revisions. So we then move to the fourth stage. Um, um, the editor who takes responsibility for that particular, particular paper uh, will write a, an email or letter to the author uh, which will be accompanied by the full reports of the three referees and they get the full detail. And the editor uh, at the beginning of the uh, correspondence will uh, highlight um, the major themes and issues that should be addressed by the author uh, to get it uh, eventually accepted. And that can take some time, and it can take a number of revisions. It, uh, so, they, it, so there can be a number of iterations and, and a number of reviews um, before finally the paper 
moves to, towards the stage of acceptance. If a paper is uh, eventually um, um, accepted by the referees um, in terms of the uh, substantive uh, content being um, acceptable, then finally it moves to these final stages where the editors ask the authors to make much minor changes, stylistic changes, typographic changes and so forth. So um, we're, we're almost at the end of the process. And once the editors are fully satisfied with every aspect of the paper, then we click the accept button. Let me tell you a bit about our two main boards, because this is where the reviewers come in directly. Um, <clears throat> the Work Employment Society, like sociology, um, operates a main editorial board of 30 academics, and their main function is to um, review the papers and take part in the process that I outlined earlier. <clears throat> Just as with the Sociology Journal, over recent years, as we've seen this kind of exponential growth in the volume of uh, papers submitted to WES, um, the, the size of the editorial board has increased. But even then, you know, we, um, without really intensifying the work of um, the board members, um, we... The, our only option was to create an additional board called the Associate Board, who also took on um, mainstream uh, refereeing work. So we now have an editorial board comprising 30 academics, and we also every year elect an Associate Board comprising another 30 um, academics. I said earlier, uh, going back to that, um, the review process, that sequence, uh, once the editor decides that a paper is of sufficient quality to send out for review, uh, we select three referees. <coughs> Previously, it always used to be uh, two members of the editorial board plus one other. We've changed that. Um, now, each paper that does go out to review only has to have at least one member of the editorial board uh, put in, and that reflects the slightly increased workload we've introduced for the uh, associate board. So, uh, three referees per paper. Um, uh, they, we do our utmost to ensure that whatever the subject matter of the paper is that we use referees that are uh, in to a full extent or a certain extent have the likely knowledge and expertise to critically assess that paper. That's not always possible because at the same time we're trying to balance the workloads of the, of the boards and to make sure that some people aren't going you know, too far over the maximum and so forth. Um, so sometimes um, referees might be asked to review a paper that doesn't appear to obviously to be that to fall directly within their area of expertise. But we do our best to ensure that. Um, and, and increasingly these days, um, when we select the referees um, to do a certain paper, we, we might have a, a subject specialist in that area, um, somebody who's more of a generalist, but we believe will have some knowledge of the area, and maybe, um, especially for quantitative work, um, a referee who's a, a methodological specialist or let's say a modeling specialist in the case of a quantitative paper. Uh, we must have at least one of those, quite often two, if it is a, a purely uh, statistical paper. And they can be drawn from the different boards and categories. So as we put there, uh, if we had a submission um, about female part-time workers in the Netherlands using LFS data, we might have used one quantitative methods expert, one women and work expert, and if we're very lucky, we might have an expert in Dutch labour markets. Um, <laughs> that might be unlikely, we'll see. But we'd certainly have a labour market expert on there. So what makes a good review? Um, length seems a really pedestrian point to start on. 
but it's absolutely crucial. So if you're just writing a paragraph and saying, oh, I like this paper and um, it's really good, but I'd change a couple of typos, that's not going to be a particularly constructive review for an author to receive. So what we want is a really constructive engagement with the, with the argument, the, the content, and the presentation of the whole paper. So you really need to write at some length about um, your views on the paper. In general, I would recommend at least 500 words, but preferably more like 800 words in terms of a review, because that would give an indication <coughs> of actually having engaged in depth with the paper. And I'm talking here about the main journal article. So these are uh, papers that are around 8,000 words long. So it's, it's a substantial body of work that you're commenting on. So it's not something that you can do in a very short space of time. Engage with the author's perspective. Um, it might not necessarily be one that you agree with. And actually, often it's, it's easier to write a review if you don't agree with the perspective, because then you can engage in an argument and, and, and um, start uh, finding loopholes or additions to that argument that you can make. But what we don't want you to do, as Andy has mentioned earlier, is just state your own position. You do need to engage with the author's perspective. Um, criticality is, is, we take for granted in a way, um, but it's actually quite difficult to do that in a constructive manner. Um, and it's, it's an art to write something that um, is helpful to other people. Um, I suspect that all of you have had feedback on publications, feedback on anything you've written. And if you think about how you receive feedback and what has helped you most, maybe that will also help to write um, constructive feedback in a way that is actually useful for others. Um, don't be afraid to reject. Andy's kind of already indicated that um, we have a reasonably high reject, desk reject rate as editors anyway. Um, there might be still papers that come to reviewers that are really not um, up to par, and there's, there's nothing wrong with saying, I really don't think this is something that is worthwhile pursuing. Um, but there might be ones that you think, actually, I'd probably reject this, but these things might be able to do, uh, help the author to revise it to make it better. Um, that sounds really corny, doesn't it? Together we can make articles better. But, um, there's always, I think with all of our work, irrespective of, of who's writing it, um, papers can always be improved. They can also go backwards, and he's already mentioned that. But in the main, papers really improve, and it's really nice to see how a dialogue between the reviewer and uh, the author, even though they don't know who each other are, uh, can really improve a paper and, and make it a lot stronger. So in contrast to what's a good review, what makes a bad review? Um, one is that is too accepting and not critical enough. So again, it's often something, uh, um, papers that are in your research area or that you feel passionate about, passionate about that you want to do, you want them to do well. Um, and you then become too accepting about the, the argument that is made and you almost have to challenge yourself to keep looking for um, problems with it, for critiques, what else could be improved to make it an even better paper, even if it's a good paper already. Um, I've already talked about length. Um, having really short um, reviews is problematic for us as editors um, because we need to give an author the best possible chance to improve their paper. So especially if we have three reviewers that only write a paragraph, we might then have to uh, augment that or go back to the reviewer and say, actually, come on, what do you mean here? What, what is it that you've said you don't like? Um, please uh, elaborate on, on what you've stated. And give a verdict overall. So don't, don't, be, don't shy away from making a statement about um, what is good and what is bad in your view because your view is being asked in, in this respect. You are a rev reviewer, you've been chosen for your expertise and for your knowledge, so reflect on that and make a statement about, about uh, your view on the paper.
In terms of looking at a, a paper that you've been asked to review for the second time round, personally, I would recommend to read it in its own right, first of all. If you're anything like me, the amount of time that has, has gone by between the first and the second submission, you'll have pretty much forgotten most of what was in the paper. Um, so coming back to it, you will read it more or less afresh and judge it on its own merit. Okay, and then after you've done that, it's useful to go back to the comments that you wrote. So with the um, resubmission, you will um, receive the comments that were uh, provided to the authors from all three anonymous reviewers. Um, and you will also receive the uh, author's response letter uh, detailing how they've addressed the comments that they received. And then have a look on the basis of those, whether the authors have actually addressed those comments and whether they've, they've worked and, and convinced you on the points or the critiques that you had on the paper.